Welcome back everybody. Moving on to the next example, very similar to our previous example. We're given a bunch of financial statements for our company, the most recent income statement and balance sheet, and we're going to create some pro forma statements. However, the information that we're given in this question is a little bit different than the previous one. The sales of $5,000, they're projected to grow to $5,750. And in this case, instead of everything varying with sales, only the costs and assets vary with sales or are proportionate to sales. Debt and equity on the balance sheet are not. Also, half of net income is paid out as a dividend. So let's start off by making the pro forma income statement or the forecasted income statement. So we're told that the sales are going to grow to $5,750. Now, what about the costs? Well, if you notice in this question, we're not actually given the percentage that the sales have grown by. Because if we knew the percentage, since costs are proportionate to sales, we can then just multiply our old costs by that percentage growth and get our new forecasted costs. But in this case, we're only given the absolute value that the sales grow to. So we have to figure out what that percentage increase is. So to figure out the percentage change of something, it's always equal to the new value minus the old value all over the old value. So you may wanna write this general formula down because you're gonna be using it a bunch of times in this course. So to specifically find the percentage increase in sales, in our example, we would take the new value of the sales, the 5750, subtract the old value of 5,000 and divide that by the old value of 5,000 again. And if you do that in your calculator, you would get 0.15 or a 15% increase in sales. And now that we have that 15% increase, we can figure out what the cost on the pro forma income statement would be. So we would just take the old cost of $3,000 and multiply them by one plus that percentage increase in decimal form. So one plus 0.15, which just gives us 1.15. So 3000 multiplied by 1.15, meaning the cost grow at 15%. So if you do that in your calculator, you would get 3,450. So the cost here would be $3,450. And then taking the sales and then subtracting the cost, we would get a net income of $2,300. And we're also told in the information that half of net income is paid out as a dividend. So that means that half of this net income is paid out as a dividend, so 1,150, which is half of 2,300. And then the other half, 1,150, is retained in the company as retained earnings, and it flows into the equity section of the balance sheet. Now let's get into making the pro forma balance sheet. So let's start off with the assets. Well, we're told that the assets vary with the sales or they're proportionate to the sales. And as we figured out before, the sales have grown by 15%. So we would take that asset figure of $15,000 and multiply it by 1.15 to get our new asset figure. And if you plug that into your calculator, you would get $17,250. So we know that that's going to be the assets for next period. And here's where it gets different. The debt and equity, unlike the other example, they do not vary with sales. We're told that there. So what would their amounts be on the balance sheet? Well, let's start off by finding the equity portion of the balance sheet, and we can use that formula that we introduced in the previous example. You may want to write it down again. So the ending equity is equal to the beginning equity plus the net income minus the dividends. And this net income minus dividends part is just basically the retained earnings. So the beginning equity we can get from the balance sheet of last year, which is the end of last year. So the $10,000 there plus the net income, the forecasted net income of 2,300 minus the dividend of 1,150. So then the ending equity figure, if you net all those numbers out, would be $11,150. So that would go in the pro forma balance sheet, $11,150. Now, what about the debt portion of the balance sheet? Well, for now, let's just assume that we don't take on any additional debt. So let's say that the debt stays the same. So it would stay at $5,000. 
So then adding all of the sides on the balance sheet, so the left side would add up to 17,250, it's just the assets. And then the right side, the debt of 5,000 plus the equity of 11,150 would give us 16,150. But now we run into a problem because notice how the left side and the right side do not balance. We basically don't have enough debt and equity to balance off with the asset figure here. And if you notice, compared to the previous example that we did in the previous video, it's sort of the opposite case because previously we had the right side being greater than the left side and we had to introduce a new plug variable of dividends and pay some of that equity out to bring it down so both sides would balance. But in this case, the left side, the asset side, is greater than the debt and equity side. So what happens here? And the answer is that external financing is needed to buy more assets to support the growth in sales because the sales are growing to $5,750. They're increasing by 15% from $5,000. Well, to support that growth in sales, we have to buy more assets. Our assets are going to increase. Well, where are we going to get that money? We need that external financing. And the actual amount of external financing needed, which I represented as EFN here, is $1,100. And the way I got that figure was I just subtracted 17,250 from 16,150. So we need to get that external financing. Now, whether it's going to be that we take on more debt, whether we take on more equity, we don't know. All we know is that we need to get that money from somewhere. And the amount that we need to support this growth in sales is $1,100. So whenever you run into a question asking for the external financing needed, just follow this basic process and you'll get it. Sometimes the information will change, so sometimes they'll actually give you the percentage of sales increase instead of the absolute amount. Sometimes you'll have more detail in the balance sheet, so instead of just having a general asset class, maybe you'll have like current assets and long-term assets. Sometimes they'll tell you the actual dividend amount paid, but just overall, same process. You create the income statement, find the retained earnings, the retained earnings flow into the equity, you make the balance sheet, and then you see what is that external financing needed by just subtracting both sides in order for the balance sheet to balance on both the left and right side. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, a big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.